Ah, hello. Yes, battles and stuff. First one is against Nick or Superblar, who's just made a new channel, and I'll probably link that so you can all go subscribe to him because he deserves it, because he's probably one of the best commentators on the tube. Anyway, he's got a ditto, which is a right old bastard, let's face it. Um, for the first few turns, we're going to have Rotom kind of stall war. We're sort of trying to pre like he's trying. To he's seen I've got rest, so he's obviously going to try and get me to burn my chest though in any way possible, which is fair enough. Um, I'm kind of waiting for him to try and switch out because you know he he ain't doing shit to me. Uh, if he wants to go for a rest because I can do exactly the same thing to him, then his ditto is asleep for two turns. However, he is going to go straight in for the rest, which. I don't know, I thought it was going for it a bit early, but there's nothing especially wrong with it. But now I'm going to burn my chest, though, because yeah, I may as well. I mean, I don't, wanna, yeah, I don't want him to switch out and then I've got jackal HP. But he's going to go into his Empoleon. Now, I kind of figured since I have four, four, yeah, four things on my team that are going to resist a Scald, I kind of figured he wouldn't go for a Scald. But no, he's going to go for a Scald, he's going to get a crit and kill me. He did say he was max special attack, so that probably didn't matter. My Rotom is not specially defensive at all, and Empoleon has actually got really good special attack. However, I am now in a dilemma. I need something that will outspeed it, and unfortunately that job falls to Aggron. Um, I didn't really want to use my Aggron straight away, but I kind of figured max speed will outspeed an Empoleon unless he's running max speed, so kind of had to bite that bullet. Uh, I go into Pharaoh. Um, I kind of figured he'd go for a knockoff or an EQ, but it's mainly because I don't want to have to deal with Toxic. Toxic is bad news bears for um, a Slug Monster, because uh, Gastro would be okay, because uh, he can't re he can't knock off my lefties, but Toxic isn't great, but it might be a trade I have to make later. Anyway, he's going to set up Stealth Rocks, and he's actually running a Stealth Rocks Defog Empoleon. Um, not quite my cup of tea. I, mean, I can kind of see the point. I mean, you've got Stealth Rocks, Defog, and Roar on the same set, so if, even if you Defog away entries on your side, you can just set up Stealth Rocks again. But I know I'm still kind of in the middle on Defog. I know a lot of people like it, that's why Mandibuzz is doing so well at the moment, but it's still not quite my shtick. Anyway, I know um, Old Slug Monster's going to have this for lunch, because Gastro is beast. And uh, he, he, he dies, he kills the Empoleon. But here is the Charizard Y. I knew it was a Zard Y as soon as he brought it into Gastrodon. So, um, I'm going to have to do some really, really, really sort of risky and kind of lame plays. Because if I get rid of his son, suddenly Gyarados or Gastro is just like, Hey, hey! What's up, Charizard? How's it going? Um, so, yeah, I kind of switch into Pharaoh, go protect, switch into Gastro as he goes Fire Blast. I'm going to switch back into Pharaoh. As he goes Solar Beam, because he has no real reason to predict. Although I kind of fi I think he figured out that I was just trying to burn his son. So um, yeah, it, it kind of works out. It's a bit iffy though. It could have gone pretty spectacularly wrong. But uh, I go protect. He goes fire, fire Blast there. Uh, son fades, and now I don't really care. I mean, I'd love it if Pharaoh was alive. It'd be grand, but it's kind of a thing. I probably should have tried to keep him alive. I mean, I could have gone into Gyarados, but I wasn't sure what he'd go for. If he had Air Slash, that'd be kind of iffy. But there you go. Now, here's the main crux of the problem. His Ditto can transform into my Gyarados and intimidate me. Um, I can't do it the other way around unless he stays in for, you know, two turns while I switch out and switch back in. So he's always going to have, you know, the sort of intimidate on my Gyarados. My Gyarados is always going to be one attack stage lower than I think it is. So... There you go. But fortunately, I do get a DD up, so I was at plus one speed. I knew I could handle the Zard Y now that it, was, uh, it had to switch out, so that's cool. But now he can just go back into Ditto again, and I need to go Torn. He's going to wake up next turn, and I just needed to make sure he can't set up DDs, because I love Taunt DD, DD, Taunt DD Gira. I know how fucking good it is. I don't want one setting up in my face, especially when my Gastrodon does not have, you know, it doesn't have um, water or Storm Drain fucking sticky hold. What a pain in the ass it is. Anyway, he's going to go into Gliscor. Um, I kind of... I didn't want to get Toxic, but it's sort of like, I kind of need to. The only thing that isn't going to get Toxic on my team is um, Tentacruel and um, Agron. Agron ain't doing shit. Tentacruel can get smashed with an EQ. It was kind of, I needed to do this because I needed to do this. But now I, um, he's going to switch in and copy my Gastro, and I can switch out into Gyarados, predicting the Ditto, and now I can taunt him, and there's kind of jack all he can really do, apart from burn me, but that can get kind of iffy and 
I can out DD the burn. So that shit can get out of control very quickly. Here he makes a great play predicting me to do everything but waterfall. Um, I really should have gone waterfall, but it's sort of like I'm trying to get as much damage on the ditto as possible. Because I just need to. There's nothing I have that can just convincingly beat it out. Unless I go into Agron and manage to get up my... Uh, well, even that. Actually, no. I haven't got Stone Edge on my Agron. Agron ain't doing it. It's Gastro and Gyarados versus... Well, yeah. Gyarados, unfortunately. My Gyarados can't beat a Gyarados. Fuck. I wish I had Moxie. Oh, wouldn't that be f just fantastic? Anyway, I don't know why he... I guess he was sacking his Gliscor. His Gliscor was pretty useful. He could have toxic my Gyarados and just limited it even more. But... I don't know, he kind of felt the need to get rid of it, and now he's going to go into Greninja. Now Greninja's got Grass Knot and Protean, and that's actually going to kill my Gastro. I was like, what? Really? I didn't think Gastro was that heavy. But now I can go into Aggron. This was a really kind of ballsy play. But um, the main reason I did it is because uh, my Gyarados is going to need a shit ton of HP. So is my uh, Tentacruel if I'm going to get out of this alive. Uh, Aggron is kind of the weakest link. I know because he was life orbed and after an automatized, I'm just barely like five points going to outspeed him. Just by like nothing. Um, but yeah, if he feels like going into his ditto to try and steal my stat boost, then it's at least a speed tie. I use superpower so that I have, um, you know, minus one defense. So Gyarados can do it. I know my own set. Agron ain't touching Gyarados. So that's kind of why I did that. But he's going to make the smart play. He's just going to go into Terrakion. He's obviously scarfed. He's just going to have it. But um, here is where it gets really... Like, this is the meat of it. This is the really important, crucial bits. I can win. My first original plan was I would burn his tentacruel and I can sort of try and beat it down in a race. Unfortunately, he burns me as well, but there you go. That's that's the risks you're on with school, people. Like, I can beat his tentacruel down in a race. Uh, however, he's smarter and goes sludge bomb there. So, yeah, he gets a crit as well. That kind of screwed me over a bit because if I could beat his tentacruel down then I can switch into Gyarados, get an Intimidate, and then I can come back into Tentacle, and I might live. He's either going to have to go Stone Edge or Close Combat if his, you know, um, Terrakion's the last one alive. And at minus one, Tentacle might live a Stone Edge. However, he kind of did all that plan, so it's sort of like, fuck it. His Tentacle is going to die in a couple of turns to uh, burn. He does Scorn, and he burns my Gyarados, but I can DD again, and then he's going to die. I'm at plus two. I'm going to outspeed the Terrakion. And then this is pretty much it. So this is kind of what I have to do. It might have been better to actually kill the tentacle there. So he was forced to do something else. Like he'd have to go Stone Edge of Close Combat. But I go over it. And lo and behold, Gyarados gets the lame crit to win it. I mean, I was like, that was really lame. Because it was pretty much, it all came down to if Gyar could kill it. And I don't have any attack investment. So I'm fairly certain I couldn't. Tracking is a lot bulkier than people give it credit for. But it would have been pretty close. And he did go EQ knowing that I would die. Anyway, this next battle against uh, Robotnik is sexy. With my new team, it's uh, got um, uh, Red Card Fory with Overcoat for them looms, yo. It's got Assault Vest Lax Tyranitar. Because I, uh, I, I was doing calcs to try and see what set is best for it. Um, and uh, it, Lex, or Lex, Lax, seems to work quite well. Because with Assault Vest and Sand, your special defense is just through the cocking roof. It's ridiculous. Like, Specs Latios, Draco does 45%? I was like, what? It's insane. Anyway, um, it's also got a Mega Agron. Yeah, Mega Agron, all right. I uh, borrowed uh, Cayman's Agronite. Because, oh, you can't get Agridite on X. Thanks, guys! God, dumb. Uh, it's got Sableye with Toxic as opposed to Wisp because I needed Toxic somewhere because this is kind of like a shuffle team with Scarf Espeon to just kind of clean up shop. Um, but the Mega Agron has got Raw, Iron Head, and Rest Talk. And let me tell you, it's pretty cool! Like, I didn't do a special... Like, this is the first time I'd used the team, so I wasn't expecting much, but... What I saw of Mega Agron, I was very infused. Like, that's a close combat. And Agron was like, what? What was that? Did someone did someone fart? I didn't I didn't feel anything. So I was like, cool. This thing's awesome. If I could get up Stealth Rock support, Entry Hazard support, it would be sick. But he has a Blastoise with Rapid Spin and a Zatu. So it's not really happening. Um, I also have Floor Gears because... Uh, 
with filter, Mega Aggron pretty much has no weaknesses, really, which is cool. I mean, if he's, he's, I think it's like, I don't know what the um, actual boost on Super Effective is against Mega Aggron, but it's not as much thanks to filter. So he pretty much generally doesn't have any weaknesses apart from just special hits. And Florges is just a special tank, and it's going to tank anything. And then Agron will resist Steel and Poison, which Florges is weak to. So it all works out pretty spectacularly. But um, the main downfall with this team, I've sort of shifted into Mega Analysis mode, if you will. But I'm just going to kind of explain the team and let the match play out. The main downfall of this team is... Um, while I kind of tried to sort of figure out what would work quite well on a stally team-ish, like, you know, I wasn't quite sure how I really wanted to build it. I kind of got caught in the middle. Um, the main problem is probably Fori, and... Because it with the like he's he's not as bulky as I want, you know, I wasn't making him super bulk. Well, that's a fucking crit close combat, and I was just like, piss off, you stupid monkey. I'm not afraid of you. I'll rest up and I'm good. Which is really, I really like that. Like, this is the first time I used it, and it did pretty well. And I even calped some stuff. But, um, I'd never seen it, but people who use Jolly Scarf Terrakion, although maybe Nick was using one, I don't know. Uh, close Combat against Mega Agron does something like 40%. I was like, what? Banded Adamant Terrakion does about 65%, which is just insane. I was like, how the fuck is that possible? Uh, the Tarantar's a very funky build. So like I say, I built it so that it could come in on pretty much any special hit. Like, it, I think it can take an Aura Sphere from Mega Blastoise. Like, it can't do too much, but the whole point of this team is just to force shit out. So Sableye's a bit of a cock block to set up, guys. Agron is going to cock block just about any physical hitter, really. I mean, I, yeah. Um, here was an iffy play. I needed Tyranitar to kill the um, fucking Ferrothorn and shit. And I needed Agron at high health so it could deal with the Infernape. But I kind of got neither in the end. But still, I got to see what I wanted to see. And like, that's a crit EQ. And Agron's still like, nope. I ain't taking shit from you, bunny. Go to your tax return somewhere else, you bastard. Anyway, I do lose. But I got to see what I wanted to see. And hopefully next... Uh, you know, next video will be a Mega Evolution analysis where I can go more in depth with this team and we can see more Mega Agron awesomeness because just on this battle alone, I'm very, very happy with the way it looked and just how fucking tanky and rock solid it is. So there you go. Anyway, um, yeah, it was a good battle. I, I don't know. Once again, I lose to fucking Robotnik and Sexy because, yeah. Oh well, he's a good player. What are you gonna do? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. GG, both of you. Go check out Nick's new channel, and I'll see you guys in a bit. Peace.